Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another episode of modeling a 3D printable glove, keyboard glove with OpenJSCAD. So we'll pick up where we left off last time and we're gonna try to keep it a bit shorter to avoid mental breakdowns from all the listening. And we'll be concentrating mostly on keys and make think things parametric. So let's get started with that. So let us first make the keys a bit more visible again. So I'm gonna offset this slightly and make this visible. So basically to recap, what is parametric? It's extremely simple. It's just literally passing a parameter to a function and in our case, expecting the design or anything to change along with that. So we already have the keyboard defined there with all the different keys and we have the number of rows and number of keys. So first thing first, we could expose the number of rows. No, well, we can even copy the full thing. Let's just use the defaults that JavaScript first offers. Uh, we'll revisit that or what's best to do in a bit. So let's just do that. Normally our design shouldn't change. Very good. Uh, next thing is you're going to see that we're now able to pass these parameters. So for example, what if we want a three rows instead of five? Well, now we can literally do that. That's one advantage. Um, it's always good to think that you shouldn't ideally have to have too much parameters because it gets complicated but it really depends on what kind of design you want um, i usually even for more complex things like robots and things like that i tend to have between 10 and 20 parameters after a while it gets hard to visualize what each does but really there's no limit to that so it's good idea for example to make that a bit more explicit here so setting the actual number of rows and columns. Uh, we could also add another parameter, which is the size of the key. So uh, let's just add key size. And um, as you can see here, we're using the key function here. So it already has the size being uh, parameter. So what we could do is either override this by default or just use this and pass it there. And you'll see what's going to happen here. It's not going to change because it still uses the default from here. But what we can now do is basically pass this along right here and then modify it. Uh, we could have non-square keys, for example. Uh, of course, these are a bit too big. And this is a good exercise. So as you can see, the diff distance between the keys is not dynamic. So we're going to make it a function of the size of the key here. So let's see, we have the key size here. And we need to first find where are we offsetting these. So I think if I remember right, it was... Uh, let's just increase that a bit more. As always, don't hesitate to play around with larger values. So here you can see it's actually based on this. So what we're going to do is use kind of simply key size of zero because that's x. Always remember x, y, z is uh, usually the good idea. Uh, so it's complaining that it can't see that. And that's kind of strange key size. That should be okay. Uh, we can always output that. Key size, key size. Ah, uh, yes. And I remembered, I think we have another call to keyboard. Yes, exactly here, which does not provide any defaults. So of course this will be undefined. So what we can do is simply 
copy and paste this here and now there will be a default value for that and remember we use that for the uh, holes in the box in the glove so that the keys fit right in so let's get back on track so now this means each and every one is offset a bit and we could add um, something like key distance Uh, I prefer to have very clear and a bit long variable names because it's frankly I think kind of better so so and of course it needs to be like this because you want the offset to be for each one so now on the x-axis at least you will have it offset and uh, now what if we wanted to do the same thing on the y-axis on the other direction and of course it's having the same issue and by now I think you will have understood that we can simply do the same thing here y-axis and use key size of 1 so y axis plus key distance let's just keep it simple and have the spacing always the same regardless of whether it's on x and y you could also of course set it differently there you go and now even if we change the size for example to 12 the spacing will always be 5 but of course since we added it as a parameter we can always change that we can make it very spaced out perhaps a bit too much but this all works so I think something smaller would work uh, yeah let's go back to 5 perhaps and let's go back to something like this there's also something but I'm not sure it's worth going into in this specific case so as you can see they're not being centered so it's always a question of what's your point of origin where do you start placing your objects from honestly there's again no golden rule uh, basically you need to have something that fits your needs uh, here I added an artificial offset just to be sure uh, we could also simply use the um, sorry the dimensions of your whole system so in this case it's the size of the rows so this width divided by 2 would give you the right placement so again this is something that's part of parametric design so what is your input parameter and how does that cascade into other changes in your design so well let's do that just for kicks so this means that you to get the width you need to multiply of course your numbers of keys sorry what was that uh, I need to remember the order of the rows and keys perhaps columns would have been better but uh, A bit of camera reset there okay let's go with the other way so sometimes honestly it helps me to change things and to see how it's gonna adapt so this means um, that was number of keys so number of keys is used here so you can just add it here const full width and that would be number of keys multiplied by key size of zero if you remember that's what sets our key size uh, plus number of keys minus one because we're having one less holder multiplied by key distance and I'm very likely have been doing a mistake but you never know so we could, e we could offset it here like we had it 
and just divide it by 2 and we'll see if I did that computation wrong um, it seems I did of course that's gonna something is gonna depend on whether the initial thing is centered or not so let me check ah yes as you can see here the little cubes are actually centered along the axis so this means we also need to account for a half key offset don't worry if this seems too complicated uh, it shouldn't it is just to explain how you can deal with parametric designs so it shouldn't be that scary and you can rewatch this video and see step by step how you expose these parameters in your functions and how you adapt your design to fit that kind of thing. Uh, so let me check. So we have that. So now I'm kind of computing that in a bit of brutish way. So again, x size so divided by two. That will likely be a minus to center it. And I don't think that's quite right. And that seems much better. So let's check now with other values of parameters to see does it work or doesn't it work. So what are we going to do now? Um, so we had this. So let's see if that works. And yes, it's still centered and it should also work for other values. There you go, always centered. So at least <laughs> that's something accomplished. So next part will be just to continue demonstrating what we can do with parametric aspects, how you expose the parameters to have some controllable UI widget that allows you or anybody using your design to modify those values right from the UI. That also works for CLI, by the way, so it's not specific to GUI. So um, I'll keep this one short. Uh, so we'll have another video very soon, and then we can dig in more into that aspect that I just mentioned. Thanks for watching. Bye.